Hello, this is Sonia from My Happy Space. Welcome back at my channel. Uh, we are going to do a meditation seat. Fill in our meditation seat today. I've done it already. We can go over it. So today is going to be a little bit longer video. It might not be so long. It might be. I always say that. But because I explain a little bit more how I fill this in, I always do it the first video of the month when we start with our memory verse bundle for people who start memorizing scripture for us as for the first time just to show you how i fill this in so for those who are seasoned who's been doing it many times with us bear with us so i'll try to be as quick as possible with as detailed as possible to show you where i found things so i always say um first of all i just write obviously our verse down we do the esv version so i just write it down there at the top then I look for two translations, which is maybe a little bit different. Um, you get sort of more word-for-word -word translations, which is the ESV, which is sort of very close to the original. Then you get more loose, thought-for-thought, thought-for-word type of translations, which is NIV and NLT. So I just do any one and decide to put them down. Now, where I find them, now if you want to go on this journey of um, this mapping, there is many avenues you can go onto. You can make it as complicated, intrigued, um, whatever you want to do it. I'm just a simple person. I just want to keep it as simple as possible. I'm a person of habit. I like to do the same things over and over again. But if you get bored of it, um, just, just jazz it up a little bit. So what I've done is I have downloaded the, the app Bible Hub. Now it looks like that. It's got a little um, Bible that lies open like, open like that. It's free. It is cap on it, and then I go to commentary. I think you can go to Bibles. Also, it doesn't really matter where you go; you always get to the same page. And then it always open at John three sixteen. That's sort of the standard place where it open. Then you see this John three sixteen Bible. Then I there's a little arrow. I just get a drop down arrow there, and I go to our verse, which is in Proverbs. So obviously, the Old Testament is first, so I just click on Proverbs. Um, and then here I click on this Proverbs 1 verse 1. Obviously, it starts always with the first one. I have to click on there and I go to Proverbs 31, which will be at the bottom, obviously, because that's the last um, um, passage in Proverbs. And then it always goes straight to verse 1. But then I just click down there and then there's the different verses of Proverbs. So I'm going to go to 30 because that is our verse. So eventually you get to our verse. But there's also different sections, there's bars there for different sections. So I usually go to the parallel first. So that means that you could get a parallel version of all the translations. You get cross-references. So this is almost where you want to start. So then I just read through it. Let's see what verse sounds good to me. This time I used the NIV in the in, um, New Living Translation. I often use those two because the ESV is so word for word, so it just makes sense to me. So let, then I write it down there. It's, it's um, obviously our verse. I'm just going to put it down here so it's easier to see. It says, charm is de deceptive instead of deceitful, and beauty is fleeting instead of vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So it's more or less the same, the last bit. Then here, charm is deceptive. And beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. So it's very much the same. It's just a little bit, a few different words. Then you've got your five W's and H. And I know if you've studied the word of God, if you studied in your exams, anything, it's always good to ask the five W's and H. So obviously who wrote it? What is the context? When is it written? Where did it go? Why was it written? What does it say about God? And how should it change my life? Now, you can use any of it. But, I mean, that is just how I came to, to work on it. Now, usually you can get um, information if you've got the Inductive Study Bible. You can get the information. If you Google it, you can get the information. Best bit is to go to the passage, read it. Also read if you can find some clues. Like, for instance, this week we found the clue, who wrote it. We found the clue in it. King Lamel. And then you can understand where did it go to, what it is about. You can get all the answers, not, not all the answers, but lots of the answers in the passage itself. I often get my information from this little booklet. It's a Bible travel guide for students, more for kids. Um, so it's given out by Tyndall House Publishers. Um, yeah, it's 
it's just a cheap little book and it gives me all the information if you, when you go to a book of the bible like ezekiel it gives you the answers to everything so i basically write that down in there um if i can find anything else obviously i will add it so first of all who wrote it let's open it let's see we obviously the words of king lamel the oracle that his mother taught him so actually his mother's words but it's written down by King Lamel. Now, lots of people don't know who's King Lamel. They think, some people think it's sort of a neighboring king, neighboring of Judah. Other people think it's just a different name for Solomon. And it's interesting, I just assumed it was always Solomon who wrote this um, verse or this passage in the Bible. Um, I knew it was sort of from his mother uh, uh, instructing him to choose a wise woman and not to be deceived by wine and woman. But I actually never know it was this King Lamel. So it could be another name for king solomon it could be a neighboring um king what is the context it was given by his mother to encourage him to be a good king and not to be deceived by wine and by women and then the last bit of our passage is talking about an excellent and wise woman so his mom is warning him now look for this woman um yeah and then, when was it written? 970 to 931 BC. Where did it go? It just went to Judah. It went to the Jewish nation. It went, obviously, to King Lamel. He, he heard it from his mom. It went to everybody who read it. Obviously, ultimately, it went for, to us. Why was it written? To tell the king to act good, to be a good king, a virtuous king, and not to be deceived by women and wine. And what it is to be a virtuous woman, obviously. And, and what it says about God and how it should change your life, I think we're going to touch on that later. So I'm not going to talk about it now. Now, here at the bottom, you see these blocks. That is your Strong's number. Now, I'm quickly going to show you where to find your Strong's number. But before we go into the details, we will look at the context. So I just want to get all the formalities out of the way. So here, you, yet again, you can see there is the bar. So you can go to Strong's or Lexicon. It's exactly the same. I just like to go to Lexicon because it put everything underneath each other it just visit aesthetically it's just better to me and then it says charm and there's a blue number there that is the strongest number that is the that's the original greek or hebrew so each greek or hebrew word was numbered by a number and they call it the strongest number so that's nice you can go back to the root of it so you can just click on it and it gives you the number the word and then it gives you translations, um, synonyms, where it was used, how it's used in different forms. Yeah, you can go as deep as you want. Yes. So that is where I get my strong words. So basically, I just go down there and think, okay, what do I want? This week was very easy. I obviously wanted to look at charm, deceitful, beauty, vain, fear, and to be praised. And I actually looked up human also because... Um, in this day and age, what is a woman is, is also um, a controversial subject. It's maybe good to go back to the original, what is a woman, a wife, a female. Yeah, so um, that's, um, yeah, so that's what I did. So let's look at it in context. So I didn't really listen to a sermon this week. I, I usually do this totally dig deep into it, see what I can find, and then I go to a sermon just to get added information to, yeah, to see what I can bring. I listened to two little talks. The one was quite good. Um, he sort of made it, he looked at this from a certain direction. And then the other one was the seven things about the virtual woman, which was quite interesting. She, she looked at it from a different di um, direction also. So yeah, I'm not going to read all of this. I'm, um, yeah, I might just read once through it. And actually when we are doing our next verse in Proverbs, I'm actually not going to go in very much detail about the context again, which is next week. Um, we will just look at it, dissect it, and look at cross-references. So let's read from here. But um, what, as I said, it's talked, it's for the King Lemel, and she said to him, um, it is not for kings, O Lemel, it is not for kings to drink wine and for rulers to take strong um, drink. Let's say drink and forget what they've decreed. Um, and then she also talked about women. Do not give yourself strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. So yes, he's warning him about women and also wine. And she, she says to him, it's an, you are a king. Your job is to rule well 
and to be fair and to be good, don't be get distracted by wine and women. Now, now she tries to encourage him to get an excellent wife. This is. And the interesting thing is, Proverbs start with wisdom being depicted as a woman. And here we see the coming together of what it means to what a wise woman looks like. So, and that was quite interesting that it start with ex ex comparing wisdom to a woman and also obviously the loose woman, the prostitute, the contrast between the two and yet ends with what this wise woman actually looked like. Okay, let's read quickly verse 10. An excellent wife who can find it. She's far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She's like the ship of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it's yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maiden. She considers a field and buy it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and make her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She put her hands to the distaff, or the yeah, distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She, she reaches out her hand to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sell them and delivers sasses to the merchant. Strength and dignity are clothing and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and she teaches of the kindness on her tongue. So that's a verse we're going to look at next week. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her bless her husband also and he praises her. Many women have excellency but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her for the free Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her work praise is her in the gates. So obviously that's our verse, verse 30. I could have chosen many other verses, but as I said, I wanted to make keep it universal. Not everybody's married, not everybody have children, but we all are women and we are all women indwelt by the Holy Spirit. So we need to aspire to be godly women. So the one talk I listened to, the, um, the gentleman said that after when we read this, this is such a high standard of attainment. We almost feel, how in the world are we going to be able to do that? I mean, she does everything. She stays up late to work. She wakes up early in the morning. You just think, when is he sleeping? When is he actually resting? Um, so, but the idea is to understand that obviously um, there's elements of these things. So when we're going to look at seven sort of, Things that a godly woman are, um, um, it will sort of maybe a bit a little bit more clearer. But the idea is that out of ourselves, we will never be able to do this. And this is almost a picture of Jesus being our bridegroom, and we are His bride. Whatever we lack, whatever righteousness, whatever um sort of attributes we lack, Jesus has completed for us. He gave us. His righteousness. Um, yeah, so he died on the cross. He was made sin so that we might be, have the, have become the righteousness of God. So whatever we lack, it's been given to us. Our whitest ropes or white ropes has been given to us. We didn't earn it. It wasn't that we, we had to do all these things to be able to get it. We are seen as righteous and appear as this perfect bride because of what Jesus did on the cross and we accepted it. So yes, this is things we can aspire to. We can look at the verse and think, okay, maybe I want to be a little bit more than that. Yes, maybe I am idle. I'm sleeping too late in the morning and, and or I am going too late to bed and I can't get up in the mornings or I am not giving enough to the poor or whatever or I'm concentrating too much on my utter beauty and not on my fearing the Lord. Yes, there's always something to aspire to, but the idea is not that one woman should be all of these. And then the next talk I listened to was quite good. She said, character of 
a godly woman is more important than she does. Yes, he's doing all these things. He's busy, but he does it because there's certain characteristic traits in her which a godly woman has. She is... She's not acting as a godly woman. She is, she is, is being a godly woman. And there's a difference. If you act like a godly woman, you might be able to do all these things, tick all the boxes off, have the Pinterest house, have the perfect little children, um, have your job, bring money in, but have be absolutely this amazing housewife, whatever um, your idea of perfection is over the world's idea of perfection is but this is not what a godly woman a godly woman is not doing it a godly woman is being she's being godly she's inward inward change she's got a new heart um, and that is something i've yeah you sometimes we forget about we just think okay godly woman tick 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 or oh, i need to all these things no a godly woman is being godly and that's what it is so the things that hints on everything a godly woman is, is actually our verse, which is verse 30. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So that is the most important thing, that everything hangs underneath that. Then after that, she's got dignity. An excellent wife who can find it. She's far more precious than jewels. So she is precious, she's valuable, but valuable. And we know we are valuable and precious, not because of who we are. We are valuable and precious of who, whose we are. We are bought by a price, a very, very dear price. We are His. And if you just go to Ephesians 1, you see the things we are in Christ. Out of Christ, we are nothing. We are sinners. Our deeds, even if they look like that, is like filthy rags. But we are valuable because of who Jesus is. So a godly woman immediately are valuable and precious because of who is in her, Jesus. Then a godly woman is patient. She considers her fields and buys with the fruit of her hands. She plants a vineyard. So she plans, she's patient, she's willing to wait and see that the fruit will grow. And that reminds me of our verse we're going to memorize in the third week. Do not grow weary of doing good, for in due seasons you will reap if we do if you do not give up. So this is a very I didn't even think of that when I chose this verse. I was just thinking we as women often doing good, we working, we working hard, we're praying for our families, we're serving our families, and sometimes we feel it's not appreciated, but I want us to encourage to continue. So basically the same here. Patient patience, plowing, watering, investing, thinking ahead. Working hard now, so when our children are late teenage young adults, we will reap the reward of putting that time and effort and that prayer into our family, into our home, into our marriage. And yeah, that's what it is. Uh, and then um, a godly woman is diligent. Now, as I said, we our life will not look like that. We will not make our own clothes or covers or buy land or spindle or um, spin things. Our life just doesn't look like that. It can. Some people's life look like that, but other people, other women, has to go work, or they they just not in that season in their life. So it's not about what you do. It's about who you are. You are diligent, diligent in your pursuit of the Lord, diligent in um, your marriage, in your being a mother, in the community, serving the community, reaching out to the poor. So that is what it means. It's not a state of doing, it's a state of being. Then the next one is generosity, verse 20. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Yes, we in all our ways can reach out to the needy. There's enough needy people around us. And if you are so blessed to live in a country that there's no needy people, financially needy people, then reach out to people because there's so many spiritual needy people, people who are depressed, hopeless, um, far from the Lord. They need the Lord, so reach out to them. But we who live in the, South Africa has got so much need, so much poverty. There's so many opportunities for me. For me, it's overwhelming. I don't actually know where to not help or to help. But sometimes I just choose one or two things and I just think I cannot do everything, but I'm going to do this one or two things diligently till you tell me something else to do or not to do or more to do. So that's what a godly woman does. 
then a godly woman have courage and faith. Strength and dignity are glowing. And she laughs at the time to come. So that's what I was going to do next week. So she put a trust and faith in the Lord. She's not worried about the day of tomorrow. Which is very apt about the verses we memorized last a month. About being not fearful. Do not worry about tomorrow. And trust in the Lord. And do not be anxious and things like that. So that is what she is. She's got faith. Faith, faith, faith. So it hangs of fear. And then, as I said, the fear of the Lord is just that that fear. Who do you fear? Do you fear man? Do you fear your children, your husband, or do you fear the Lord? So, yeah, I hope that was useful. It was very useful to me. Obviously, you can spend probably days in this passage, but I think we've covered mostly all of it. So, as I said, now I go to my strong words, and I've showed you where to find the strong words. I'm not going to do that again. So, Tom was the first one I've chosen, and it says favor, gray, um, grace, uh, adornment, pleases, and the root word is to show favor. Now, Tom can be all those things. Sometimes, if you say, Oh, that person is very charming, you actually say it because he makes you feel good, he shows favor to you, he adorns you, he pleases you, or she pleases you. And that is what, now charm is good, it's good to be charmful, but charm can be deceitful because of the person who does it. A fallible human being, even us can be charmful, we don't really mean it, we want something out of it. So the only person who can really have complete charm or favor, give favor, or adorn somebody with, with, with not compliments, but with encouragement is God himself is the only one who can do it in complete honesty without deceitfulness. And that was quite interesting to look at it. So it's something we need to ask ourselves. Are we people pleasers? Do we want to charm people the whole time? We will keep the truth from people. We will not speak truth into people's life because we want them to like us. We just want to be that nice Christian which everybody likes. And unfortunately, I've got bad news for you. It's never going to happen. Jesus was the most kindest, caring, loving, holy, without sin person in the world. And they hang him on the cross. They hated him. The truth will always be hated. Yet again, I always say there's a time and place for everything, but we can be so charmful and it can be deceitful because we can withhold truth from people. Now, deceitful obviously is deception, disappointment, falsehood, lying, useless and wrong. So this can, Tom can be that. And I said the only person who can truly be bestow favor and have perfect favor and adornment on us is God. Beauty. And there was actually not really much. It just said beauty, just to be fair to be decorated, to make yourself beautiful. And then I was just reminded of 2 Samuel, uh, so 1 Samuel 16, 7, that says that God looks at the heart, but man look at the outside. So that is just something we need to talk to ourselves. I'm, I'm just sometimes thinking this morning, I'm thinking to myself, I think to myself, I will very rarely go out of the house without makeup and brushing my hair and putting clothes on and put lipstick on or and put earrings on. Um, but I have gone many times out of the house without doing Bible study, thinking, okay, I'm going to come and do it when I come back, or there was just not time for it. I try to read my Bible and pray and spend time with the Lord every day. It might be, look different sometimes, but I try to do it first thing in the morning. But there's many mornings that I can't do it, or I, don't, I, I just didn't wake up early enough. So then I come and do it late in the afternoon. I'm luckily I'm not working, so I'm flexible. I can do those things. But... If you fear the Lord and if, if, if what he says, and if that is the most important thing for you, will you not put it above putting makeup on, brushing your hair, putting earrings on? The same with food also. Some people have the, have the habit of not eating anything before they do Bible study because they want to say to the Lord, I, I crave you more than physical bread. You are the bread of heaven manna. And so maybe we should ask ourselves the same thing. What is the most important thing? What gets priority? Are we so concerned about the latest fashion? How we look, how thin we are? Um, are we spending just as much time studying the word of God, meditating on it, make ourselves enriched with the word of God? Then we are taking time to look at the latest fashions and and adorning ourselves. I mean, as I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to look the best you can 
for your husband and for other people. But where where is it in your priority list? That's just something we all need to ask ourselves. Because obviously, a woman who fear the Lord is to be praised. And all these things, as we can say, is she is divine. The vain is the next one. It's like a viper. It's like a breath. Empty, fleeting, nothing, useless, because it's empty. Um, and um, it means nothing. It's fleeting. It's like idols. And it's in the same um, context when law talks about idols. Then fears um, is what you're afraid of. Awesome, revere. So obviously, we're not scared of the Lord that we can't act and we're so scared of to wipe us off the, um, off the face of the earth. What it means is that heaviness, that respect. What the Lord says is the most important thing, not what the pastor said, what the neck first, what my husband says, what my friend says, what my children says, what the Lord says and his ideas, and what he thinks about the situation is the most, most important. So that's what it means. And also Proverbs start with that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So if you want to fear of the Lord, you need wisdom. And also Actually, um, Proverbs 8.13 says to, to have fear, what it means to fear the Lord is actually Proverbs 8.13. It says to hate evil, pride and arrogance. So that is it what mean, to mean to fear the Lord. We will hate what is evil. Do we hate what is evil or are we tolerant towards it? Do we have pride in our heart? Are we celebrating pride? Are we arrogant? If we have those things, we're actually not fearing the Lord. We are fearing more what man are presenting to us or what we ourselves are presenting to us. And then I looked at praise. It's, it's interesting. It says boastful, give praise, um, um, sing praises. So this is what you can boast about. You fear the Lord, as I said. But And then one way we're not supposed to boast in, in, in anything, we should boast in the cross as our verse of last. A verse is as far for me to be boasted, except in the cross for our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the word has been world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So that's a good reminder. So to, what we need to boast is in the cross, the fact that we are saved, Jesus salvation. So that is something to celebrate and to boast. Not how we look, um, how charmful we are, how beautiful we are. All those things are fleeting. It means nothing is vain. Then cross reference. There was loads of cross references. Let me quickly show you where I find the cross reference. Cross references. Um, when I go back to parallel, as I said, here on the one side. It depends on if you obviously do it in the smartphone. Just scroll to the bottom, and it will be there. But obviously, if you're on a computer or on a bigger device, it's next to it. So here is many. Um, references um, to where you can find um, um, cross references. So, and then I also just thought I'm going to look up what what's a woman, and it's a female, wife, married, child bearing. So that is what is a woman. So I hope that was useful. Um, yeah, as I said, look for these things. Just remember to be a godly woman is not doing things, it's a being godly, it's an inward heart the season our heart has been changed and also look to jesus he has completed what it means to be a godly woman on the cross what we lack we can find in jesus so yeah i hope it was a blessing um and thank you for memorizing this verse with me and i'll speak to you on friday when we will do a pretty page in our bible god bless bye bye